Hi, welcome to Arlington's Community Update. Today I'm here at the Children's Room with Liz Cohen. Thanks for coming out today, Liz. Why don't, yeah, why don't you introduce yourself first? Sure. Hi, I'm Liz Cohen. I'm the Executive Director of the Children's Room in Arlington. I've been here about two years. It'll be two years in January. And I'm just so honored and thrilled to be the Executive Director. And I'm excited to tell more people about it. Excellent. And I'll have you give us a little bit of a description of the children's room. Let us know what you guys are all about, how you're aiming to benefit the community. Sure. Um, so the children's room is started on the idea that no one should have to grieve alone. Um, the central focus of our work is kids who are ages three and a half to 18 who have had a parent or a sibling who died. Um, we know in Massachusetts alone there are 77,000 grieving kids, so that means one in 17 kids is dealing with the death of a parent or a sibling, and often they feel like they're the only one. Um, so we have created this movement across the country um, looking at child bereavement and thinking about ways that we can create safe space for people to come together and support each other. Yeah, that was perfect. This, this is a really great organization. Um, I've, I've lost people when I was older and, you know, of course that's tough, but I can't even imagine what it's like to have to go through that as a young child. Um, so it's excellent that you guys are really giving back to the community with this space. Um, and why don't you talk a little bit about the services and support groups that you offer? Um, so the children's room, I wanted to start by saying we never charge any of our families for any of our services. We know that when there's a death loss, it often comes with financial hardships. Um, so all of our services are free of charge. Um, the core of our work is a peer support group. So we have peer support groups six times a week that meet every other week. Um, it's a way for families to come as a unit and then the parents are taken care of and their kids are taken care of. The kids are divided up by their developmental age and the parents are able to sit with other parents who either had a spouse, partner, co-parent die or another group for parents who had a child who died. Um, the kids are upstairs and hopefully we'll be able to show you some of those spaces um, and they're with other peers who've had similar death losses. Um, and these groups meet throughout the school year. Um, people stay typically about two or three years and usually come to us within a year of the death, but we find that some people come back and forth, some people come right away, some people can't come for years after. Um, what we've also learned in the last few years is that grief is not one size fits all and our programming can't be that way. Um, so we developed a couple of additional programs to really help our families. The first is family night, which happens once a month. We actually just had one last night. Um, and it's a way for the family to stay together as a unit and do an art-based memory project. Um, and we invite extended family, so we know when a death occurs, it's not just a nuclear family, it's also cousins and aunts and grandparents and neighbors and nannies and kind of who else is part of a family. Um, so those are lovely, those are once a month, and we have about six to eight families at a time, and they stay together as a unit. So that's a, a new program is family night. Um, we also realize that parenting is really difficult and the issues around parenting, especially when a co-parent or spouse or partner has died is um, especially challenging. So we created an eight week psychoed didactic group where parents can come in, talk about their struggles as a parent and we can help give some tools to expand their toolbox. So things around how to communicate, communicate about with the person who died, um, how to continue with discipline, how to navigate those really hard times throughout the year, either death anniversaries or birthdays, but also the holidays are tricky. Mother's Day is rotten for some people, Father's Day. Um, so those groups happen both in the fall and the spring. Um, and then we've also expanded to do a lot more work with teens. We know that adolescence is a time that's difficult and being other is really hard and being other because you are someone who had a parent or sibling die can be especially difficult. Um, so we have monthly social activities where teens can come together, they meet here in the house and then they'll go rock climbing or a cooking class or an art based activity or a Bruins game um, and they're able to just be who they are. So they're not the person whose brother died, they're Liz. 
yeah. right? So they have this thing in common, but they can go and be social with other teens. All right, that's incredible. You know, I loved how you said grieving isn't one size fits all. That almost seems like it should be a little tagline for the children's room because hearing about how many the various different programs that you have for people of all ages. You have so many different ways to help people both grieve with their own families and grieve with a community of others who have dealt with this problem. Um, but that's great to hear. Um, so next I'll have you talk about uh, the Memories Walk. I hear you just wrapped that up this past weekend. Do you wanna give us a little info on that? Sure. Um, Every year, we the Sunday after Columbus Day, so mark your calendar for next year, October 18th, um, we gather as a community at Town Hall and we, as a group, we have t-shirts and ways to do memories and celebrate the person who died. We have photos up on the, um, on the screen and we walk together to remember our, our folks. And it's a dual purpose. One, it's to raise, most importantly, to raise awareness and gather the sense of community um, and to also have visibility within Arlington, which is a community that has been so good to us. Um, and secondly, it's, it is a fundraiser. Um, I go back to my constant thing, which is that we make a, a concrete promise to never charge any families for our work. Um, we started as a very small organization. Um, we were in the basement of the church across from Whole Foods now um, with a, a little tiny budget and now we're an over million dollar organization. Um, and so we need to be able to support all of our programming and services. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So those of you who are watching, even if you don't necessarily have any involvement with the children's room, it's really something to consider because this great organization, maybe it hasn't helped you, but it could have helped someone that you know, it could have helped your neighbor, your friend. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, and are there any ways that the members of Arlington can volunteer to get involved with the children's room? There actually are. Um, <laughs> because again, we're... Uh, such a lean organization. We only have 11 staff here um, and serve at least 100 families every year within our house and we're upwards of almost 900 people that we serve through various services here at the house. Um, we are very grateful and very dependent for volunteers. Um, every night that we have a peer support group we have one staff member and about 12 to 15 program facilitators. Um, so that is our number one way that people volunteer. Um, so the program uh, volunteer training happens twice a year. It's a pretty intensive experience. Um, and we do that, one, because people need to work out their own kind of grief journey and their lost history. Um, and two, we want to do some real didactic training. So it's a 35 hour training. It's over two weekends. Um, we just finished the fall one, but the information on the January training is on our website. So I would encourage your viewers, if there has ever thought to themselves, oh, I've always wanted to do that with the children's room, we're always looking for volunteers. And it's really, I think, one of the best volunteer experiences out there. We also, for anyone who's driven by the house, we have a phenomenal garden. So if anyone out there has a green thumb, <laughs> we always have volunteers coming in. It's a great corporate group. So if people ever have like a corporate outing, that they want to do like a volunteer day. That's a great way to come in, help clean out a garden, plant, weed. Um, we have school groups that come in also and do some cleaning in the house. So we have a group every year from Belmont Hill that, com that comes in. There was a teacher there who, I think his dad died when he was younger, and he gets a group of young men to come in every year and just clean the house, which is amazing. Um, so that's another way to volunteer. Um, Finally, I would say, um, you know, we have a really amazing board with committees. So if anyone has board experience right now, we're actually looking for someone who has financial experience. Um, our longtime amazing treasurer, Steve Andrew, who is well known by a lot of people in Arlington, he is finishing up his second term with us. So we're looking for someone who has that type of experience. And if you have any other ideas, um, call us and we have people that have filed and um, we always have someone from Arlington High School do their senior project with us. So we're, we're, we're lean, like I said, and we're always happy to have volunteers. So thank you for asking.
Yeah, that's great to hear. So it sounds like you guys have sort of a nice symbiotic relationship with the community going on. You're helping Arlington, Arlington's helping you. So that's another thing to keep in mind if you're looking for um, an experience to volunteer, this would be a great place. They would really appreciate the help. And how can people get in contact with you if they want to volunteer or if they maybe need to utilize your services? Um, I always send people to our website. It's a, there's really good information on there. It's childrensroom.org. Um, within there, you can reach out, and our number's on there, our email's on there. Um, most people can just call our main line, which is 781-641-4741, and leave a message, and someone will give them a call back. Um, when a parent who is dealing with a child who had a loss, um, wants to reach out they have to call the line themselves so often i get this question of like oh a neighbor might say oh the you know i know this dad died next door i don't know what to do can you call them um we really want people to come towards us when they're ready um it would be pretty jarring to get a phone call out of the blue <laughs> like this is a children's room calling um you know we're we're one of those clubs that people are really glad that we're here but hope they never have to use us um, but we're also can be a great resource if someone is a professional, a social worker, a teacher, and wants more information. Um, so yeah, our website, our main line, and just info at childrensroom.org. Great ways to contact us. All right, perfect. Well, that's all the questions that I have for you. Thank you very much for meeting with us today and giving us all that great information. And to the community of Arlington, um, keep this service in mind because like she said, you hope you don't need it, but if you ever do, it's always here for you. So thank you for that, Liz. It's great to meet you. So good to meet you.